Welcome to Envisioning Success, the weekly podcast that's your prescription for business clarity. In today's episode, we dive into bridging the gap between marketing and sales. Join Laura De Benedetto and Julia Becker Collins as they explore the significance of consistent messaging, the communication struggles between marketing and sales, and effective strategies to maintain message consistency. Tune in for insights that can transform your business. This is not going to be the most professional entry to the show. Mm. Oh, well. That's the dry open, folks. Anyway, welcome to Envision Success. My name is Laura Di Benedetto. I'm joined by the lovely and fabulous and always intelligent Julia Becker Collins. She is my business partner and my co-host. This episode is awesome, obviously, because we're hosting it. Um, and it's all about bridging marketing uh, and sales. So there's a lot of um, companies where marketing and sales kind of fight with each other. We're not trying to do that here. We really want to help you to have a really awesome experience making your marketing to sales super seamless, one congruous, is there a $5 word in there, uh, experience and something that really helps you to make bank because ultimately that's the point, make your customers happy, yada, yada. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, do me a favor, do the like, subscribe, ring the bell thingy, do all that. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. And um, also just a loving reminder, this show is sponsored by Vision, uh, celebrating our 25th anniversary of marketing success. And we would love to serve you if you need it. You can go to vision-advertising.com and you can check us out, get a free consult, do all the thing, pick my brain till it bleeds. We're here for you. All right, Julia, let's talk about some great stuff. Okay. Ready? Sure. I mean, I'm as ready as I'm going to be. Let's be clear. It's a Thursday afternoon. Do you have wine with you? I have water. Boring. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. I, I know that's what I got too, but I do have chocolate. <laughs> Anytime we record these on a Thursday afternoon, they're the punchy episodes. Our producer always yells at us about that. Is it yelling or is it celebrating? I don't really know. Somewhere in the middle, I feel like it's a hybrid. Yellowbrating. Yellowbrating? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> New word, TM. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there's going to be some uh, takeaways that we want you to get from this episode. We want you to understand the critical role of consistent messaging in both marketing and sales, because if you aren't consistent, good luck selling anything. Uh, we want to offer you some strategies for ensuring a smooth handoff between marketing and sales. And also, uh, we'd love for you to get the importance of a collaboration between the marketing and sales teams for successful customer engagement. So um, I want to start with some questions for Julia, and we can just kind of dive in, make sure you get those three takeaways. And you're like, yes, I got my doggy bag full of goodies, living life. I told you guys, it's Thursday afternoon. Don't ask a lot from me right now. Um, dive into the wise, deep end. No. What? Do it. Go straight into the deep end. Do, Do it. it. So what challenges have you seen when marketing messages don't align with the sales approaches? I mean, it, it's a classic problem that we see in all different kinds of businesses, uh, products, services, doesn't matter. When your sales force and their messaging and their efforts and how they represent your brand and your company are not aligned with the marketing efforts, whether that's because... Um, they're unaware of what marketing's doing, or nobody's trained the sales team to speak on brand, or because they're, you know, going rogue, which happens sometimes with the sales team. Um, when there is a lack of synergy. Oh, I'll pay right? you for that. It's a good word. It's not only a $5 word, it's a buzzword. Uh, when there's a lack of synergy between sales and marketing, messaging and efforts, it seems what ends up happening is that it seems like your company is completely disorganized, more disorganized than us on a Thursday afternoon trying to record a podcast episode. <laughs> and it doesn't build faith and trust with your potential client and with your audience. We've talked about for so many episodes now, and we will continue to talk about one of the important things you do uh, as a brand and as a company in order to build that trust with your current client base and your future client base is to have consistency in your messaging so that they're getting the customer, the client is getting 
one set of information. It could be coming from different places and it could be said different ways, but the information they're receiving is all aligned with each other. And so one of the challenges that I have seen when those messages don't align is a really classic problem of you lose sales, which is, you know, we're here to make money. Hello. Um, and you don't want to be losing those sales because of small changes you could be making between sales and marketing. Yeah, solid. I've seen a lot of that myself where it's just really like, it's almost like whiplash. The customer mm -hmm. is like, what the hell? Do you right. even work for the same company? What's going on? They get right. confused. Um, I, I think also I've seen uh, the customer thinking that they're buying one thing, but they actually end up signing up for something else. And it causes problems six months to a year down the road with a very angry client thinking, hey, I signed up for this. Mm, actually, you didn't. So when there's consistency, um, it definitely goes better. You can avoid that. Yes, yes absolutely. Um, what, Laura, in your experience, what are the most effective ways to ensure that you have that message consistency across marketing and sales? Uh, frankly, just have your marketing and sales teams actually in a lot of the same meetings when you're talking about what's going on. Make sure that a lot of the uh, data being supplied uh, to both teams is consistent, but also there is information from the marketing team being given to the sales team, but also the sales team being given to the marketing team. Like you can't have your marketing team operating in a vacuum and expecting them to be able to know what the salespeople experience out in the wild. That's not going to happen. You, you have to like get live input of, Hey, this is the feedback we're getting from people. Um, this is our sales experience. Can we, ref you know, tailor the marketing to make this work a little better. Honestly, if you can have both teams influence each other's efforts, that's how you're going to get the best results. Agreed. Absolutely. Um, can you share a time when a well-aligned marketing and sales strategy led to significant success? Sure. Um, honestly, this, I'm going to just pick on me. I wasn't always super aligned myself. You know, listen, I'm going to tell you the truth and just make a confession. Here we are at the church of podcast and um, I have a confession. Um, I am actually notably lousy at marketing myself, but I've always been great at sales. By the way, this is true of most marketers and mechanics don't have a good car, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The carpenter has a crappy house. It's just kind of how it goes. And actually one of the biggest transitions that I saw was just in my own self in getting our team to reflect more accurately what the sales experience was truly like. So for what we did with vision is we actually transformed a lot of our marketing and built it around what the sales process organically is because our sales process is, is extremely not salesy. It's extremely friendly. It's very transparent. It's very consultative. It's like, no, I'm not giving you a proposal, but you and I can co-create what you want. Um, it's not order taking, like we're here to actually provide something powerful. And because that is so unique um, to the marketing industry where there's a lot of order of takers out there and that's not who we are, uh, I kind of feel like we had no choice in engineering all of the marketing around that. And as a result, it's now a seamless transition experience. It's much better for any of our prospective clients to experience the marketing. And then as soon as they talk to me or Julia or anybody else, it's the same. It's perfect continuity and there's no surprises. Yep. Agreed. I do remember we had a client a while ago where um, the way that he, who is the CEO and other people that were in sales talked about the brand was uh, vastly different than what you would get when you went on the website. One wasn't correct and one wasn't incorrect. They were just really different because the website was built from a place of thinking about the engineering of the software versus mm. the benefits to the end user and how the end user would um, interface with the software, but also what the end user or their potential client was even interested in versus um, you know, when he was in sales, he would talk about those benefits, but then they'd go on the website and they'd see engineering speak. So not only is this an issue around, you know, not using language that your potential client can understand, it's also, like I said earlier, that disconnect between um, marketing and sales and what information is being passed along. What are you emphasizing as like 
the differentiator of your business versus other businesses. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that actually. Um, there's, man, there's so many examples out there. I mean, listen, anybody listening to this, I really want you to know that if your marketing and your sales team are not in sync, don't panic. It's fixable and you can get everybody on the same page by stop acting like they're separate pages. It's just one page. Every, the entire company has one unified goal, grow, serve people, whatever it is. You could be offering veterinary software. You could be um, hauling trash. It doesn't matter. You are providing a solution to a problem. And the entire goal of the company is to do that for as many people as possible. That's it. So, um, Julia, I would love to know what are some top tips for alignment? Any conversation tips or anything that um, people can use right now to like get people on alignment, assuming they're not at all aligned? Where would you suggest people start? Yeah, I would come from a place of, you know, having a meeting where you're both in the same room between sales and marketing and doing a download between the two teams of what are, you know, when you pitch this, what are you pitching? What are the top, you know, key aspects that you're pitching? What kind of language are you using? Um, what are the key terms? How are you describing what we do as a company? And then seeing where they overlap and see where they don't overlap. One of the things I have found to be really successful is having some kind of professional development session for anybody that is outward facing in a company whether they're in a specific sales and marketing role or not, if you are interacting with the public, you are marketing your company. So making sure that everybody's on the same page. It could be a part of new employee orientation. It could be an annual training. It could be done at your annual meeting, whatever. But doing something where everybody's getting the same information and saying, here are our main talking points as a company um, you don't have to memorize them. You don't have to use this exact language. We're not trying to put words into your mouth. But, you know, when Jane talks about ABC Software Company, it should be in the same vein as what Joe says when he talks about it. It shouldn't sound like two separate companies. It should make sense that this is all about the same company. So I think the first thing that people can do is really, you know, compare notes see what's working on one team and what's working on another team and get everybody on the same page and then create a plan going forward to make sure everybody continues to be on the same page. And how do you train those new employees? Um, it, you know, we alluded to it earlier, but what can often happen is a lot of animosity between a sales team and a marketing team. And I have seen that where one says, yeah. you know, we're doing everything. And the other one says, no, we're doing everything. But in the end, it's really that, you should be working together to bring the leads in to close that sale because marketing and sales needs to hold hands. And if you have animosity and if you're not aligned with your messaging, then you're actually working against the cause that you both are trying to work towards. That's a really good point. I think um, marketing people don't always understand what salespeople do because they haven't always done it and salespeople not having done marketing, don't always understand what they do. And the way that it's supposed to function is marketing is supposed to create leads for the sales team to help them in addition to the leads that they cultivate on their own. That's, that's what it's supposed to be, period. Um, marketing is also supposed to help people to just purchase on their own in the case of like products and whatever, you know, something you can buy from a website. So Marketing has a very, very powerful purpose. Sales has a very powerful purpose. They're both really useful. And when you're getting teams that are like infighting and whatever, it's it's largely because they don't necessarily understand. So if you have teams that are butting heads, it would actually be very useful to educate everybody on this is what this department does. This is the purpose of this. This is what this department does. And sometimes you could even do like a, hey, go around the room and share what your week was like and what you worked on and what kind of big achievements you did and, you know, the types of projects you have. And everybody can share. I think empathy is a really important uh, function of that type of conversation. People can, can just totally get stuck in their own little mind and thinking, oh, that my experience is the only one and everything else is stupid. And it's not that, like people are cruel, but people forget to um, just actually think beyond themselves. And if they actually hear about other people's experiences, then they can get outside of themselves and they can think, oh, 
there's a lot more to this. Yes. Yes. And then you can start to get along. <laughs> Agreed. I think, you know, in a lot of departments, people think that, oh, well, it's incredibly obvious what I do and my contributions to the company and how I work and what is happening here. But I promise you that unless somebody's in your department or has done your job before, they don't understand what you're doing. And I don't have to understand everybody's in and outs of what they do all day, but you should have, a, you know, some level of understanding of what the sales team does and how they bring in business if you're on the marketing team. Just like if you're on the sales team, you should have an understanding of what the marketing team is doing and how each of you is contributing to the other's success. Because like I said earlier, so often there is that animosity and they each each department thinks that they're doing all the work and the other one's causing problems and nobody wants to give anybody credit. I know. God, that's so true. That's not great. No. Um, if you don't have a sales team and you only have marketing, that's a different type of problem. Um, in some respects, it's actually a little easier because then when you do create a sales team, uh, onboarding them means having them spend lots of time with the marketing team. So it's seamless from day one. Yeah. The other thing is if you only have salespeople and you don't have marketers, hello, shameless plug. That's what we're here for. Um, but also having the salespeople sit with the new marketing people when they come on board. But the other thing that's important is, frankly, it's, it's really easy for us as leaders to just rule from the top down that this would be a mistake in this case, because the people who interact the most with your customers have so much information to give you about how your customers buy, why they don't buy, why they hesitate, why they get scared, um, what people say on social media before they buy. Your marketing team has so much valuable information for you that you should use to shape your marketing and your sales efforts. Your sales team has a lot of valuable information to share with you about the same things. And I think you can use those quite a bit. Yeah, I agree. So is there anything else that you want to add to this episode? Hmm. I feel like we have really done a good job at starting this conversation. Obviously, our theme this month is going to be around these topics. So we're going to do a deeper dive. But, you know, in terms of messaging and messaging synergy, if you will, <laughs> Uh, Would you say this episode is vibrant? Oh, God. No. <laughs> no. Never. Uh, for the folks never. at home, Julia hates the word vibrant with a searing passion. I Why? do. Because it's overused in nonprofits. Yes. If you sit in a room with like 10 nonprofits and they all go around and explain what they do and their mission, I'd say nine out of the 10 have vibrant in their mission statement. Neat. Yeah, that's like me and the word nomenclature. I'm permanently scarred for life on that one. Yeah. It's that's just... a story for another day. <laughs> Good times. Anyway, uh, let's put a bow on this. Um, if you have questions about how to get your marketing and your sales team on the same page, ask us. We're always happy to help. Honestly, if it's a quick question, you don't have to hire us. We'll just have to happily answer your question anyway. Just reach out and say hello. Um, please like, subscribe, share the podcast. Uh, we'd really love for as many people as possible, like yourself, to listen to the show. We really want to get this out to as many business owners as we can because business could be done so much better. And we really understand where a lot of business owners find themselves. And it's acting like you have it all together, mostly because you have to, but secretly thinking in your head, oh, crap, I don't actually have it all together or I'm overwhelmed. So don't tell anybody your secret's safe with us, but share the show. <laughs> <laughs> it helps them and helps you too. So that's it. Um, in the next episode, we're going to be talking about um, turning marketing leads into sales conversations, how to actually go from marketing to sales. It is a funnel. I will walk you through the funnel next episode. And it's a sequential process that I think you'll love. And um, I think that's it. Remember, we are sponsored by Vision vision-advertising.com. And we're always here for you. See you next time. 